Hi there guys, um, I'm sorry, I know it's been a while since uh, I last posted any videos or, or anything at all uh, and I am sorry about that. It's been hugely busy at work lately and I've just not had a chance. But when I have had the time, I've been watching uh, a really great YouTube channel uh, hosted by Pedro Andrade. Um, it's called Comp Layer, um, or Comp Layer. Uh, if you've not seen his stuff, then I'd, I'd highly recommend checking them out. There's some really great tips and information there. Uh, I really enjoy watching his interviews uh, with guests from the industry. He runs an advanced compositing course too for aspiring comp supervisors. I, I'm years away from that level yet, but I do enjoy watching his YouTube videos. Uh, anyway, I'll post a link to the description so you can check, check out what I'm talking about. But to my point, a couple of his videos go into keying and edge work and specifically into despill. Uh, and this inspired me to use some of Pedro's techniques uh, and put my own spin on them and create uh, my own version uh, of his gizmo, myself, for, for Nuke, which helps with edge work and despill, and helps with the blending of the edges with the despill. So in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about my new gizmo, which I've created, or my new tool, how it's set up, how it works, and demonstrate some possible ways to use it practically. It's worth saying that this gizmo is still very much, from my perspective, in beta form uh, and it's not fully polished yet so I still need to do a little bit of working on it. Uh, I'm only really learning Python quite slowly at the moment in and around all of the other stuff I've got going on but I do plan to make a more polished version of it uh, with things like inputs that auto hide and some more functionality but I'm not quite there yet. Uh, I did think about waiting until I developed it further, but really I thought this video is going to be about how the tool works, how it's set up, and how you can use it as is. So I think if we just think of this as version 0, then uh, it's something we can at least work with, and it'll still work well. Uh, I think the first thing to talk about then uh, here is despill and what it actually does. Most of you watching will hopefully understand the importance of despilling your plate, if not, then I'm going to post some, some really good links uh, in the description, which uh, you can watch and then come back to this video. Uh, I really do recommend pausing here and then coming back if, if you don't really have a good understanding of what despill is, uh, and then come back and it'll make a lot more sense. Or at least what I'm going to say next will make a lot more sense anyway. Um, when you've got bad edges, it's often the case that it's either the green screen plate or the replacement background plate bleeding through into the edges causing them to look bad. Uh, and by that I mean uh, the lightness values of the background in this green screen uh, can cause inconsistent edges, uh, edges that appear either too light or too dark uh, and don't merge correctly between the two plates. Or it could be that the replacement background, the, the one that you're putting behind the subject or talent, has uh, colour or luminance values that are inconsistent with the foreground uh, or, or the subject which is going to be keyed, which will have a similar effect making your edges look bad. Either way, it's often a good shout to try working on the despill before you start tearing away at those edges that you've worked all tirelessly uh, to get in your keying. It's worthwhile mentioning here that in this video I'm not going to be talking about the core despill where you're removing the, con the colour contamination from the core of the image. When it comes to edge work, uh, assuming here that you've got a good alpha, then there are a few different ways to make good looking edges that blend well with the background. The first is uh, to reduce colour fringing, so that's straightforward despill. Uh, this way uh, you're removing the green hue from the image but you're still going to be left with grey luma values depending on the green or the blue screen in the background. Another way is you can match the background colour and luminance uh, often people have multiple despill sections to match the different variations in, in the background and then, you, then and you animate these as the background changes. We'll get into ways to automate or semi-automate this process a bit later on. That's another way you can do it. Or, or lastly, you can match the edges of the foreground colour and the luminance by extending the closest pixel inside outwards. With this in mind, I decided to have a go at creating my own gizmo, which I hope will help put the different edge management and edge blending techniques all together in one place. Here I have open a very simplified version of the chroma key that I did for my showreel. Uh, I've recently updated it to include my new despill tool. Uh, I'll open it up in a second so that you can see what's going inside, then I'll show it working in, in context of the comp. 
uh, but to quickly walk through the controls first of all uh, and, and how we would use them. So this is the tool opened up. At the very top of the screen here then is the screen colour. This is where you would uh, choose or pick the colour of your green screen or blue screen or, or any other colour for that matter. Here you would simply pick or choose the colour of, of the background screen for it. So in this example, we've got a nice green screen here, we would simply use the colour picker and just sample a nice colour. This works in the same way as it would when you use a key light or most other colour difference keys. Uh, as a last resort you can simply put a 1 into either the green or the blue if you want to just pick an average colour for the screen. Because of the way that I automate the despill inside of the gizmo, the closer the colour that we get here, the better the result's going to be. So it's best to pick the colour of the actual screen rather than just putting a, a one in the blue or the green. Next, we've got the uh, despill blending method. Uh, this is the heart of the tool, and as you'll see when we jump inside the group, your choice here will affect the way that the tool works. There are four options to choose from. Uh, we've got use the background input or use BG input. This option uses the replacement background to dynamically despill the edges. In other words, the luminance and colour of the background will be dynamically inserted into the spill areas of the edges. Uh, this is especially handy when you've got a background that has a lot of detail and contrast. Uh, it does have some limitations though, like um, when the replacement background is drastically different from the foreground, you, you could end up in that case with edges that, uh, although they match the background quite well, they no longer match the foreground, which makes it look even worse. So it does, it works really well, as we'll get to and you'll see, uh, it does have its limitations, which is why we've got a number of other options here available to us as well. We have use constant colour. Uh, this is, as it sounds, you would simply pick uh, a constant colour or type one in uh, or use the selector and choose which, which colour you like. Uh, then that puts a constant colour into the edges or into the spill areas. Does pretty much what it says on the tin. Then we have uh, edge extend. Uh, this, as I mentioned earlier on, there are really two ways to treat your edges. Uh, aside from affecting the matte when it boils down to it, uh, and aside from the constant colour. Uh, you either match the destination background from outside inwards, in other words you put the new background colour and luminosity into the edges, or you would go from inside outwards and push the inside edges towards the edge. So in this instance, we're looking at the latter, it pushes the inside tonal values outwards towards the edges. Uh, it's not the most sophisticated edge extend, but for this we're not looking at fixing broken edges, instead we really just want to take uh, some of the, the values and, and blend it, and hence the edge blending method. Lastly, I wanted to include uh, an alternative edge extend uh, method using IBK. Uh, to be honest, I would never have thought of this until I heard, until I heard, heard it mentioned by Pedro. I'm not 100% sure that I've got the implementation of this correct, but it does seem to work. And where it doesn't work, I've put in some controls to help limit any sort of artefacting that goes on, either due to the colour or, or the IBK affecting it in some other way. Which we'll get to when we go down uh, and we try it out for real. Luma method is next in terms of the controls, how we desaturate the despill. Uh, the way that this works is by identifying the despill and then desaturating it so that you're just left with the luminance values to work with. Or we just put it back if you just want straightforward despill and not wanting to manipulate or blend it in any way. Next question would be, how do you know which luminance method to use? Or how do we know which works best? And the answer to that one is, generally we don't. Um, I think with this control, it's often best uh, just to experiment and see which works best. Um, we do have a, a view spill map available to us which actually shows us uh, the spill map output that we're left with so that when you go through and you can have a look to see which of the luminance math methods to use you get a good idea of what you, which is going to work for your plate or ultimately you, you can come back and change this at any time so that generally as a rule of thumb I tend to stick with the Rec 709 it tends to be the most accurate in terms of the luminance values which you've taken away from the plate and ultimately want to put back however once, once you've done your despill and your blending 
or during the process, then you can come back in and mess with this at any time. And then you can always look at it and decide which works best for you. The good thing here, though, is being able to view the spill map at any time um, just by clicking the view spill map out output. Then you get a good idea of not only uh, where you're going to be affecting in terms of the edges of your image, but you can also get a good idea of where you're going to want to try and avoid affecting. For example, things like skin tones uh, and the it, the inside core. I know we did said we wouldn't talk about that too much, which again we can get into a little bit later on. I have included, uh, and again I'll get to this, the ability to be able to mask the. Uh, the blending and the despill as well as an overall mask so we'll come to this later on but not at this point it's worthwhile just knowing not to worry too much about the core and we can take care of that later on going down into the next section we've got method specific controls so each of these sections in this area will change depending on the edge blending method that you've got selected um, if you were to choose background input, for example, then you've got some method specific controls here. Uh, if we wanted to go into edge extend, then there's, there are different controls for that. Each of these dynamically updates as, uh, as, as you select your edge blending or your, your uh, decibel blending method. So if we go through each of the different blending methods in turn, we'll get a good idea now then of how the controls work and what each of these different methods do. So if we start first of all, uh, the default selection by the way is none. Um, this just gives straightforward luminance based despill. Uh, it basically takes a, a key light, despills your image and then puts back the luminance so that you've, you've removed only the green or blue spill without losing any of the luminance values. This could be useful if all you want to do is remove colour fringing or if you're not worried about luminance issues in the edges and you just want to despill the core. I know we said we wouldn't go into that, um, but eff effectively none just means no blending whatsoever. Straightforward key light based despill. Next is the constant colour blending method. This is this really is as simple as it looks. You just type in your values or so you, you would just type in your values if you know them, if you want solid blue, solid green, solid red or you, you can use the picker to pick something from the background uh, or you can use your standard uh, sliders to, to move it around or, or pick from the color wheel. The tool will then replace all of the spill with that constant color and then you can mask it into a specific area if that's what you're interested in. That's about all there really is to the constant color except to say that these controls will be applied to your image if the despill method is set to constant color otherwise they won't affect it in any way. Next is edge extend. As I mentioned before uh, this is not intended to be a heavy duty edge extension uh, which is why I've called it uh, edge extend despill. Here again the, the controls are quite self-explanatory. All we really have here is the edge blur size which effectively uh, controls how far inwards we're, we're blurring the edges so that we push that out. I do intend on adding more controls, but for now, uh, key. the key is subtlety. And only a few pixels will make a big difference. Again, really only just looking to pull outwards a little bit to blend the edges. If you need more than that, then you might want to look at addressing it in the alpha, or if the edges are really are broken, then some dedicated edge extension or dedicated edge treatment tools are probably what you're looking for. This option can often work really well when it's used with masks, especially if you're only looking at affecting the edges that need it. Next, we've got the IBK Edge Extend. Uh, I, I mentioned this before. This is a new technique to me. Uh, I only just picked this up watching Pedro's Tech Corner videos and I think I've got the technique correct but it might need a little bit tweaking. Uh, I've found that there are sometimes issues uh, when when using the, cl the clean plate due to the colour range resulting in some strange colour fringing. Sometimes uh, I have countered this with some additional controls which can quickly bring those sort of issues under control uh, and still make this quite effective. Uh, I found that using uh, the saturation slider here and then lowering it, if you, and we'll get into this when we actually look at using this tool completely, bringing the, the clean plate saturation down often does control any sort of colour artefacting that you get there. Beyond that, then uh, you really can start to tweak the uh, IBK's alpha 
by either using the gain or the gamma sliders to it, and that, that can further bring things under control. Uh, but as I said, normally just bringing the saturation down on the clean plate can, can help control things a lot. Uh, and then you end up still getting good um, extended edges without things like blurring going on, but we'll get into that again later on. Next, we have the use background or use BG input, which is uh, effectively using the background uh, to put the actual background luminance and color values into the into the spill areas, uh, and specifically in our, our instance here, we've got the background being put into the edge pixels so that the background and the foreground blend nicely. Uh, I did, for this method, I took a lot of inspiration uh, from Pedro and combined it with other techniques that I've learned from them, uh, from Steve Wright. And I found that although this option is not a panacea, it doesn't fix everything every time, often you can get some really nice looking blending going on by using the background and blending it in with the foreground. So that takes us pretty much all the way through all the different despill edge blending methods. Then lastly, really the only, the only thing to talk about here is masking. Uh, before we jump inside and see what's going on and how the actual tool works. So for, for the masking, we've got two things to consider. For the mask, we can mask the effect, or, or the um, we can mask the blending effect, and or we can mask the overall effect. So for the blending effect mask, we are simply just masking in anything that we're doing up here, and whilst still keeping the actual despill. So for example, if we wanted to use the background in with the clean plate uh, we can do that and we can place the background inside of the any of the, the despill areas however you can often see sometimes that ends up in the core so for that we, we would just simply use the alpha as a mask uh, which which is the, the default is in inverted and then that will just kill all of the effect as you can see on the screen here uh, inside of the core whilst still keeping the nice blending that we get going on at the edges. Or you could actually create for example a roto and then uh, if, if you wanted to use a constant colour or you could use this in multiple instances with different rotos and then mask it into specific areas and that controls everything that masks both the the despill blending methods that you're using and the overall despill for the whole uh, plate which the node is using. So for example, if I wanted to mask in solid color or if I wanted to mask in an edge extend into a specific area and I didn't want two lots of the key light despill, then I would just simply be using the overall mask and then just masking it only into the areas that I needed. Or if I had perhaps a different despill method going on and I wanted to specifically control only the areas that I'm using this tool for, then I could use that here as well. So this is an overall mask for the overall node, and this is a mask only just for the despill blending. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Two different masks that do similar things, but one controls the overall mask and the other one just controls the despill blending. Okay, so now that we've walked through the controls and talked a little bit about what each of them does, let's jump inside the group and see how it works. So this whole tool is based around the key light despill to start with. It's the key light node which I've based the whole setup around and from here the premise is that we use math to separate out the spill areas and from here, everything is just manipulating these luminance values uh, in different ways and before adding it back to the plate. I've tried to label uh, the key areas and what each part does so that anybody that opens up the node can always have a look to see what it's doing and how it works. If you're interested in a detailed walkthrough of the setup, I do plan on posting that on my webpage very soon. And I'll update this video to put a link in the description so you can check that out. Otherwise, feel free to open up the group and check it out for yourself. Have a play. I'm sure that there are many ways that many of you can improve it even further. On that note, if anybody does have any suggestions on how to improve my setup or how it can be tweaked to make it better, then I'd love to hear from you. You can always get in touch with me on any of my social uh, media links. So now we've walked through the despill. We've quickly walked through the inner workings of the tool. Uh, the only thing really left to do is give a quick demo of using the tool in context so that you can get a better feel on how it works in context of a comp. So here, for the purposes of demonstration, 
and to keep things simple I've a very basic simplified keying shot I have the alpha already pre-keyed uh, and extracted and the clean plate pre-rendered for us just, just to try and keep things simple. Generally you would use this tool where you need to work on the edges and before applying your main alpha because you want your main alpha to cut out what we're doing here. It's important to mention here and to get best results that you should denoise your main footage before despilling either by working on a denoised footage throughout or by denoising like what I've done here either by denoising uh, before we do the despill and and then putting it back after. Otherwise you risk introducing artifacts in your despill because what you would be despilling is the grain as well as the footage which can give un unpredictable results as well as possibly ending up with artifacting. Taking a look from top to bottom then we've got the RGB pipe coming in from the original plate followed by as I mentioned before the denoise. Uh, we do our despill, put back the noise, we've got some colour correction going on, we're copying in the main alpha before pre-molting and then and then merging with a simple over. In the middle of the comp we've got the extracted alpha which I'm using here both as the main alpha for the plate as and for the mask for the despill. So to use in context then the easiest way for me to do that is just to put my a fresh version of, of the tool in. So here we go. Okay, so to, to look at the image, we can see that we do that the image is in need of despill. There's quite a lot of green fringing going on, and it does really need some despill help. So if we open up the tool, the f we can see that the first thing that we need to do is select the spill color. So here, as I mentioned earlier on, I would just select an area of the green screen that, that gives me some nice coverage. Then I would pop that into the spill color, and that gives us a starting point. So now I can look back at the final result. And we can see that we've managed to remove all of the green spill, but now we've got another problem. We can clearly see that the areas that we've despilled, and that doesn't sit well with the background. So what we need to do now is blend the edges so that the foreground and the background merge seamlessly. And this is where the different despill methods come in. Because all we've done right now is take out the green hue but left the edges alone in terms of value and luminance. Uh, in fact, uh, if we toggle on the spill map, we can see exactly where we've removed uh, the green hue from. And we can also see that there's quite a bit of despill inside the core of the image on the girl's skin, on her clothes. So we really need to consider that a little later on when we come to use some of the blending methods because we don't want to mess with those areas too much if we can help it. So looking at the background, we can see we can also clearly see that the background is not a flat image, which is why we need to blend the edges. Different backgrounds will need different blending methods, so there's no correct or best blending method. Uh, because each background will be different, we, we need to have a look at different blending methods depending on the background, and we can try out different things. Some will work better than others for different backgrounds. I've set the tool to always start at none, so we know where we're going. In this case, let's go through some of the options uh, and take a look to see where they can help. In its simplest form, the tool does not need any additional connections to work with, but to use any of the additional blender methods, you do need to start to connect up some of the inputs. Here we can see we've got four different inputs to work with. We've got the RGB, the background, the clean plate, and the mask. The RGB is already connected, uh, and that's if we stick with the non method or even if we were to use some of the edge extend or the basic edge extend method we don't need to connect any other inputs however uh, because we're going to be going through and seeing which works best it, it's good it's a good idea to connect them all up so here we can see I've got the clean plate here so I'll connect that up we've got the background and I'll connect that up and then we've got a mask which I'll connect that to the alpha now we can go through and have a look at some of the blending options that can help us out with this image. As I mentioned before, we really only have two ways to help blend the foreground and the background together. We either blend from the inside outwards with the edge extensions or from the outside inwards, in this case with the background into the foreground edges. 
Uh, and lastly, I, I guess you could class this as an outside inwards as well, uh, and that's by putting a solid colour in, into the spill areas. So let's start with going from the inside outwards and see how that helps. So I'm going to move this over here so we can see what we're doing and zoom in a little. If we were to start with uh, the simple edge extend blending and see if that helps. This starts off with a default blur size of one pixel. Here, subtlety really is the key. I would recommend never pushing really beyond five uh, or so pixels. Otherwise you end up risking you blurring your edges, especially in the fine detail areas. But if we zoom close, we can see the effect that this has had. It has helped us out an awful lot. We've got rid of a lot of the, if I turn this off and on, um, we've got rid of a lot of the spill coming in the hair. We've got rid of <coughs> a lot of the spill coming in the edges. And, it has, and we have a much better looking image. But if we zoom in a little closer, we can see now that we do have a little bit of a black or dark line around the outside of the shirt, which is not exactly what we're looking for. But at least we know we've got some good detail going on in the hair, which is good. We can come back to that in a bit. Let's move to the next inside outwards, and that's using the IBK Edge Extend. This does give us some better detail, especially around in the hair. But now we have some artifacting coming from the IBK, which you can see around here. Not to worry though, uh, this is why I put in the additional controls to help us with this very thing. Uh, so in this instance, if we pull, if we zoom in where we're looking at where the artifacting is, and we pull back on the clean plate saturation, we can see that that deals with that nicely. And now we've got some better looking edges without the artifacting going on. We do have a little bit of issue in the core here, which I can deal with that just by applying the despill mask, and that deals with that as well. Yeah, you can see enabling the mask inside helps us deal with the edges, whilst also still controlling any artifacting that's going on in the core. The core still has the despill, um, but it doesn't have the despill blending going on when we enable the despill mask. But once again, we can see we have some with that same issue coming up with the dark edges around the outside. We have nice detail in the hair. Looks good with, with no additional spill in there, whilst we're still keeping some nice detail going on. But on the edges, we've got this dark area which we're not looking for. So we know that inside outwards works really well for the hair, but perhaps not so well for the body. Let's try instead looking at the outside and pushing that inwards to see how that works and see if it looks any better. Here we would use we would click use BG input, which as I mentioned before takes the background and puts it inside of the spill area. So now we can see that this looks much better. The black outline has completely gone and instead we've got the background coming through just where we need it, where the background's darker, the edges are darker, where the background's lighter, we have some nice light areas coming through as well. We've got some additional controls we can use here if we're finding that we, that perhaps there's too much detail in the background coming through, uh, especially on the edges, then we can just blur the background uh, and then it affects in a more broad way. Uh, again here, if we find that the background is coming through inside of the core area that we're not interested in, then we can just mask off uh, using, uh, we, here we're using the, the alpha of the girl, uh, and then it's being inverted, and then we're using that as a, as a mask for the edge blending method here. So then all that we're left with then is just the blending method going on just in the edges. If we look at the hair, we've got some nice detail going on in the hair as well. Uh, the details still there, but yet none of the uh, issues that we have with the green bleeding through is there. Uh, where the background is lighter, we've got some nice lightness going on as well. And even where, where the colours start to change, or where the colours change drastically, for example here to here, you can see that that's bleeding through nicely into the edges as well. And yet we still don't have that dark outline going on. 
the only thing to remember here then is that if there's a very big difference between the foreground and the background plates, uh, then you still end up with edges that will match nicely with the background, but instead they will no longer match with the foreground and you'll end up with, a, with an image that, doesn't, that looks even worse. So although this is great, we can always keep in mind that in those instances we can can always keep in mind that in those instances then we would just simply check out the different edge blending methods and see if we can use one that works better or perhaps a, a combination of both if that's something that would work for us. Also when you have fine details such as the hair you can sometimes find that you lose a little bit of the detail just due to the fact that uh, you'd be blending in the edge pixels uh, especially with very fine hair uh, so that it blends in too much and actually gets lost in the background. So for, in those instances then a good compromise would be to use perhaps one of the edge blur methods just for the hair and then you could use uh, the, the background input for the rest of the body. But for this image I don't really feel like I'm losing too much detail in the hair so I'll probably just keep it as it is because it looks seems to look pretty good as it is. And that's about it for this video. I think I've covered everything. Um, if you want to try out my despill tool then you can download it from Nukipedia. I'll put a link in the description of this video which takes you straight to the Nukipedia page. I hope this video has been useful and helps you, helps you out in some way. Please always feel free to contact me using any of my social media links uh, about this or, or anything else. I'm always open to connect with anyone that wants to reach out. So until next time, guys and girls, happy comping.